Hi, it's Tony here from the Think to Thrive team with this last video for you on the truths and information and inspiration from the great, great Neville Goddard. This is the last video, as I say, and we'll try and wrap this up for you, give you some real inspiration and uh, focus as we enter the autumn of 2020. So, first of all, I want you to think about a empty room. And Neville Goddard talks about an empty room as being a shadow. So if you just thought about an empty room, it's just a mere shadow. Now I want you to think about a state. In other words, how you are being, your state of being. So we could say my state is uh, fun or gratitude or thankfulness or jubilation, sadness even. But think about a state. Now, thinking about an empty room or just a dark room, he says it's just a shadow. If you think about a state, how you could be, you could imagine that, that is a mere possibility. Can you see how we're just changing that perspective? But, and this is such a powerful teaching, he says, if you enter that room, from that state that you are being, if you actually enter that room and that is your reality, your state of being, that is the only reality, that's pure, if you like, manifestation, that's pure reality around you. So again, he says, if you think of a, a room, just a mere shadow. Contemplate a state, mm, that's a possibility. But if you enter the world, from a state of being, that is reality. Now, those three statements may just sound rather confusing, mm, you know, maybe not very powerful, I don't really quite get that. But when you actually contemplate those three truths, what he's actually talking about is that for a lot of us, we are governed by the outside world, by what we see, what we observe, our senses. We can sometimes stop and consider changing our state, our state of being, hoping that we could be in a different situation, if only I could feel different. But the only true way that you can create amazing change in your life, wonderful manifestations, actually changing the outside world, as he says, reality, is to enter the world from the state that you prefer. Such a powerful, powerful tool. Now, I'm going to show you an image uh, shortly. There you go. That is a model of the Statue of Liberty. And just to move this idea forward, for those of you out there that need another way of explaining this, uh, let's think about this Statue of Liberty. Now, again, I could ask you, before I'd shown you that particular statue, now I could ask you to think about a statue. Just thinking about a statue. And as Neville Goddard says, that's just a mere shadow. You know, just thinking about a statue. If we made it more specific, and I was to say to you, this was the Statue of Liberty, now you're beginning to contemplate a state. In other words, the Statue of Liberty, well, what does that represent? Freedom, liberty for all, uh, in the United States of America, that, that uh, sense of freedom. So again, you're beginning to contemplate that, and that becomes a mere possibility. But if you were to enter a room or an atmosphere, an environment, from that state of absolute feeling, wow, liberty, freedom, excitement and joy, that is your reality, that becomes reality. Now it takes a while for, to sort of uh, absorb these ideas, but they're truly life-changing when you totally embody them. Now there's just a few more points I just want to share with you before we leave this teaching. He talks about being buried in a state and what I mean by that is that you could find yourself in a state of being of fear or worry or stress, particularly during these challenging times, due to outside circumstances. So you've been buried under into that state. And you're merely now a spectator of other states. But this is such a powerful, powerful line. If you rise from that current state to another, you will express it. Now there's a subtle difference here. Can you see how the first example was that your state was 
on condition of what you've been observing. You're buried. In other words, if someone's been buried alive or buried under the ground, they're, they're helpless, aren't they, in that state? But if you rise from that state, that current state, to another, you will express that and change your circumstances in the outside world. Wow, that is so cool, that is so powerful. He also goes on to say that everybody in your outside world, to a degree, is you pushed out. What does that mean? Well, simply the idea that if you, if you have anger and resentment in your everyday, you're going to probably find that around you uh, as you move around. So indeed, you know, the outside world very often is you pushed out. I love that idea. This is another great quote. He says, you don't need other people's permission to be used as an extension of your dream or ideal. OK, it's it's an inside job. This is down to you. You don't need other people's permission. And sometimes I think when we try to follow our dreams and, or passion or a vision, we look to other people for validation. And he's saying you don't need other people's permission. And it's simply your job to get on with the task. He also says that as you move amongst the outside world with this vision in your imagination, the, the divine or guidance, however you want to, infinite intelligent, however, however you want to define that, is always guiding you. It's giving you subtle messages. That's so true. But again, coming from a state of pushing your state out, as opposed to being buried under a state, is far more likely to bring those synchronicities in your direction. And finally, I love this. Neville Goddard talks about the idea of just going off to sleep at night time uh, and being aware that you are going to be entering a period of subconscious, uh, the subconscious domain. And he, he, he uses this wonderful line. He, he, actually, um, he actually says, think of your subconscious, where all the power is for the change, as some, some, your lover, your partner. And he says, when he goes off to sleep, what do you want to feel, my love? So as he's going off to sleep, he's basically saying to his subconscious, what do you want, what do you want to feel, my love? There's this dialogue going on. So that last thought before he goes off to sleep is, what do I want to feel? And he's having this communication with his subconscious mind as if to say, this is what I choose to feel. What do you want to feel, my love? Powerful, powerful information. Um, you know, I truly, I truly love the work by Neville Goddard, but I think I'm getting to that point of understanding now, which I'm sure a lot of you out there will be feeling, is that you pick up information from lots of sources and you kind of push them all together and you get this, this picture. And at the moment, it's all about, for me, uh, the idea of really thinking from a state and not being buried by a state expressing from a state and that takes discipline that takes focus are you going to pay attention to everything in your outside world which is so addictive that it becomes a habit that is completely out of your control or are you going to take hold of the reins and say no i'm going to just i'm going to actually work on what all of the great mystics have said since the big beginning of time and i'm going to go within and I'm going to imagine a, the, the, the scenario that I wish to experience. I am a creator with infinite possibilities. It's going to take work. It's going to take focus. And in later videos uh, within the Think to Thrive program and previous ones, you'll see Mike and I talking a lot about that. Well, I'm going to wrap up this uh, Neville Goddard uh, series of uh, videos. I hope you've enjoyed them. Stay, stay focused. Keep, keep learning, keep studying, it really is the secret to freedom. For your inspiration and awesome success, this is Tony Mallet signing out. I shall see you in the future.